Hallelujah. Great to be in God's house. A very, very warm welcome to every one of you who's in the house of the Lord this morning, because this is the day that the Lord has made, and we are believing that God is in the business of blessing every one of us. The Bible says that delight yourself in God's house, and He will grant you the desires of your heart. Even as you come into God's house this morning, you know, you are delighting Himself, and God is going to bless you, and He will grant you the desires of your heart. This morning, as you come into this place, I want you to think about one or two friends, one or two family members whom you want to bless. And even as you think of them, be a blessing. Share the link of this YouTube with the person. Drop a text right now to that person and say, hey, I would like you to log into this particular uh, message for today and I want you to be blessed. So I want, I want you to find the, the link over here that's inside the chat right now you know, and share it with somebody because we are in the business. We are in the business of blessing people. Even as much as God has blessed us, blessed us, we want to continue to bless others. As we delight ourselves in the law and His commandments, God will continue to grant us the desires of our heart. Hallelujah. This morning, you know, before even as we begin the service, I came across this particular news article by Channel News Asia, which many of you may be familiar with. You know, and it says that interestingly, in Singapore, considered one of the most prosperous countries in the whole world, you know, it says that, but yet indeed, though we, although our country has been so prosperous since 2016 until now, based on the survey that's been done for the past six years, Singaporeans or people living in Singapore are actually becoming more unhappy or becoming unhappier. It's interesting. Many of us would think that right, being prosperous financially would always lead to a happier life. But survey and science seems to indicate that there are more people in this world that may be becoming more prosperous financially, but they are not living a very satisfied and happy life. And I believe that our church at River is a very, very relevant church. I believe that the Bible itself is a very, very relevant book and wisdom that is relevant for every one of us. We all want to live a life that's happy. At our church this year, we have begun launching a vision of building together a growing community whereby we want this particular community to continue expanding, where people becoming happier, healthier, and living more abundantly because we are leaning in into the Word of God, trusting that the Bible is the, is the book of wisdom and God is our source of every happiness, health, and abundance. How many of you want to be blessed by God to live life happy, healthy, and abundantly? If you want, I want to raise your hand and say, God, count me in. God, count me in. I want to live a life happy, healthy, and abundant. So I want you to do that right now, you know. Think of someone whom you can bless, a family member whom you believe that you want him or her to live happy, healthy, and abundant. I want you to just share the link with that person because God will use that link, use the word of God to continue to encourage that person. So this, I just, we have been last month, in last month, we have been learning about that God is a God of love. God is a God of compassion and God is a God of justice. Our God is not just a God who loves. He is God of love. And because of that, we are able to love others because we worship the God of love. We are able to live life abundantly and be generous because we learn and we experience the mercy and the compassion of God. And because of that, we want to express the God of compassion. We have also learned that God is a God of justice. He is not happy when he sees people suffering unfairly. You know, the thief comes to steal, 
to kill and to destroy. In other words, what we are going through, what people are going through in their suffering, in terms of suffering their health, in their financial provision, in the physical way, God, the, God is a God of justice and He wants to restore. He wants to restore their blessings. It's so important for every one of us to understand God wants us to have an abundant life. So our church is a very relevant church. We and the gospel, the good news of the, Christ, of the Christian faith is a very relevant good news because we all want to live a life of abundance. We all want to live a life of joy. We want to live a life of, of happiness, a life of health. And therefore, learning about abundant living is so important. This month, we have begun teaching about and learning about the path or the key to abundance. Now, abundance is a very important, it's a very important aspect. You know, in the world teaches us, the world teaches us that if you want to be successful, it is measured by all the external markers, material gains and financial gain. If you want to, if you talk about success with someone, you know, they will be interested to know how much money you have in your bank accounts. When you talk about success in today's world, they will be looking at the car or the cars that you are driving, whether are they belonging to German, the German made cars, or they're making, or you no, know, at the house that you are staying. Are you living in a private property or are you living in public housing? Is it a 99 years leasehold, 999 years leasehold, or a freehold? That is how the world has deceived us. That's why God says, You must understand this the God of this world is the one that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. It causes us to believe in the lies, in the definition that God has intended for us. God's definition of success and abundance is very different from what the world defines. The world defines it by the markers of possessions and material things that we have, the money that we have. But in God's definition, abundance is more than that. You see, there are many of us who have richness, riches and wealth, but we have a poverty mentality. We always think that we do not have enough when we have so much already. You know, I always I share with people whenever I have personal conversations, abundance is about the very fact that you have more than enough to share with the people you have. Some of you know that this week, Pastor Monica and myself and Sister Kara, each one of us, you know, we we you know in our own way, we went to the gross to the supermarket and we bought you know about nearly 80 over dollars each of, of, of groceries and and begin to share it with the people who do not have food stability or food security. They have no idea when is the next meal that's coming. Pastor Monica and I realized that. When we have spent $880, rather, you know, in a supermarket, we were able to afford to provide for someone 356 servings of food. Even if the three kinds of three kinds of servings make up one meal, we are able to provide at least a hundred meals. In other words, probably a person's one month food, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You know, when we go to a supermarket, we realize that we are not poor because we have enough to be able to share with others. There are many of us who have, who have a lot, but we have a poverty mentality. And the key to abundance is about not believing in the lies that the enemy has shown us. This morning, today, I want to share with you that as followers of Jesus Christ, we are called to a different standard. God wants us to live in a very, very abundant manner, especially in five areas. I want you to take down some notes today. 
I want you to scribble something on a piece of paper or on your mobile phone and scribble it down. God wants you to enjoy abundance and they all come encompass five areas. The first one is God wants us to live spiritually rich. We are a spirit that is dwelling, that has a body. When we pass on in life on this earth, the spirit stays continually. That's why we need to learn how to live spiritual rich. The second thing is the area of emotional well-being. Many of us struggle. You know, one, of the, one of the sicknesses that kills people, that cause many people living dead. Living dead because though they are alive, they are living like dead people. It's because we are deprived of healthy emotions. And God wants us to do that, to have emotional well-being in our life. The third area is healthy relationships, rich and deep relationships with the people whom we love. And I think it's so important because today's world, relationships become so transactional. The fourth area where we can live abundantly is that we need to have physical vitality. Too many of us give in so easily to accept, to accept what the doctor says about our sickness, our, our disease, our age, and therefore we must give in to live the way that the Word says. But the Word of God says that by His stripes, you and I are already healed. Can you say yes and amen? Living abundantly is about the fact that we have more than enough. And because we have more than enough, we can share with the people around us. It's so important for us to understand that our God says that He come to give us life to its abundance. If you want to live life abundantly in all these few areas or in all these five areas, I want you to raise your hand and say, God bless me. Bless me with an abundant life. Would you say that? God bless me with an abundant life. Heavenly Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, if there's any one of us that is living life lesser than abundantly, Lord, I pray that the word of God, under the breath of this message, oh God, you will begin to impart and the fresh anointing into our life. If there is any area right now in front of us listed here, that we are living lesser than what you desire. God, I pray that you who are Jehovah Rapha, God the healer, you who are Jehovah Jireh, God the, God the provider, you who are Jehovah Nisi, God our banner, you who are Shalom, the God who bless. Lord, right now, may you use this message to bless us and to find strength and to find you as the source. Right now, open our hearts, open our spiritual eyes, open our, let our obedience, oh God, surrender to you, be the one that caused the window of heavens to open and we shall be able to live abundantly in all these five aspects right now. In Jesus' name, we all pray. And all God's people say, yes and amen. Yes and amen. Trust me, as you open your heart today, God is going to use His Word to bless you and to unlock and to unlock the windows of heaven and to really shatter the chains that have been lying to you and deceiving you. The first area I want to share, I want to share with you and talk to you about is that we need to learn how to live in spiritual abundance or what we call spiritual richness. Understand this, by the time we pass over this earth, our body shall be gone, but our spirit is alive because we are a spirit that happens to have a body or in this, in this hundred years on earth. 
Therefore, so important for us to understand that our first stop in wanting to live abundantly is about us seeking for spiritual richness. What is spiritual richness? We must begin to realize, and some of us is exper are experiencing this. You may be a very successful professional. You may be earning more than enough money in your life, but you begin to realize that there must be something more than just getting a paycheck every two weeks or at the end of the month. You must begin to realize that you might be wondering, is life more than just going to work and slay for our physical bosses? Going to work just to pay our bills and that's all in life? I want you to realize this. There's more than that in life. God has called us according to His will and purpose. And therefore, it's important for us to learn, to realize that God, the first key to living abundantly is to learn how to live with spiritual richness. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, give us the key to have this, this sense of fulfillment, this sense of purpose, more than just a paycheck in your life, more than just raising up your children so that they can have a job next time and have a paycheck to pay the bills. More than just being married, if some of us are here are married, and to have a marriage for the next 100 years, and when, and when we all pass on, we are not married anymore. Life is more than that. God has placed us here for a purpose. And Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says this, Of everything else, more than anything else, God commands us, seek first and most importantly, above all else. Before you seek for the paycheck, before you seek for the next promotion, before you seek for the next purchase, next house, next car, next dress, next luxury bag, before you seek all these things, above all else, strive after God's kingdom. Strive after whatever that helps to expand the kingdom of God and all His righteousness. What are all His righteousness? People think that righteousness is about holiness alone. Now, that includes holiness, but when God says, seek after His righteousness, He is saying this, I want you to strive your life in such a way that you only do what is good and what is right in the eyes of the Lord. What is good and what is right? God is a God of love. Practice love. God is the God of compassion. Practice mercy. God is the God of justice. When you see people who have a sickness but do not know Jesus because the thief has come to deceive them, to say to them, you must accept your sickness as is. You see that God is the God of justice. Practice that and share with them God as the source. When you see someone suffering because they do not know how to get rid of this addiction, you begin to know because you know that the, 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 our Jesus Christ has set us free from the things of this world. You can share how with him or her how to break the chains because through prayers and intercession and through support and the love of God, this chains can be broken because the anointing breaks the yoke of slavery. And the Bible tells us, I want you to learn how to know that your life is beyond the paycheck, is beyond having children and, and raise them up so they have a better paycheck to pay the bills, is beyond the fact that you are looking for next promotion. I want you to realize there is a purpose. There's a sense of fulfillment that I want you to have. And that is, and it goes about when you seek God's kingdom and all the things that are right. Do what He wants. And when you do so, the so beautiful thing is this. All these things. You know what's all these things? Everything that you need. If you need a promotion, 
God, all these things will be added to you. If you need financial means to raise up your children, well, all these things will be added to you. If you need clothes to wear, if you need something in your life, all those things shall be added unto you also. Can you shout hallelujah to that? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In a, living abundantly is more than just trusting our life on a paycheck, on a job, or trusting our life that all that we need to do in our life is just to raise up children so that they have another job with a paycheck to pay their bills. It is more than that. It is not about a service level religiosity. It is to orient our whole life in such a way to know that the person, the people that God has placed in our life, God has placed them in our life, or God has placed us in their lives for a purpose. For, that, for us to preach the gospel, for us to share the good news, for us to make disciples of all nations. That's why David, the psalmist, says in Psalms 16 verse 11. You know, in fact, the title of this Psalms in, 16, 11, in Psalm 16 is this, the is the psalmist's portion in life. And the psalmist says, you will make known to me the way of life. When we know God, he will make known to us the way of life. And the way of life for God is that he wants you and me to live abundantly. Can you say out and say, God wants me to live abundantly. And when we know God, and his ways, he will be the one that provides us the way to live abundantly. And in his presence is fullness of joy. Wow. It is not a better paycheck, a better make car, a larger house that we may find the fullness of joy. You can have a house there are many people who may have a house, but they do not have a home. There are many people who have lots of finances in their pocket and their bank, but they still live in poverty. But when we begin to know God and seek after His kingdom and His righteousness, in His presence is fullness of joy. And in your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Wow. Such a beautiful, beautiful encouragement by the psalmist. Stewardship in our life means, especially in our spiritual life, it means that we must recognize every breath that we take, every, time, every second of time, every talent that we have, and every treasure that we, that we possess is a gift from God. It's about us investing our time, our talent, and our treasures in ways that will glorify God and honor God in a world that do not have enough when we have more than enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The second area of abundant living that God wants us before I go into that, so what can we do? What can we do understanding about how that we must live in spiritual richness? I want to understand this. And I shared this with you last week. If you have missed out last week's sermon about a generous heart, I want you to read, I want you to go in and, and, and be blessed by the Sunday message. If you know someone who has got more than enough but living in poverty, I wanted to share that message about a generous heart. And today I'll share with you one more time what you can do about living in spiritual richness. I want you to look at two things. Look at your look at your financial budget. Where are you spending your money? Recalibrate it. Look at your schedule. 
Look at your timetable and how you spend your time every day. What have you been doing? Use that to reprioritize and get yourself to learn how to be involved in God's kingdom and God's righteousness. Spiritual richness is more than that. The second area I want to share with you is about emotional abundance. How can we live in emotional well-being? God wants us. Our emotions are gifts from God. When we are emotionally well, we are able to have a sense of peace and contentment beyond our circumstances. Some of us, our moods, our feelings are based on what are the things that we are experiencing. But as sons and daughters, as spiritual children of an almighty God, we must be confident that our God is in charge. He is in control of everything, the good and the bad, because He is a God that is big enough, bigger than our circumstances. An emotional well-being is identifying that our emotions are a gift from God. And it caused our life to become more enriched. And when something and these emotions are meant for us, listen carefully, these emotions are meant for us to facilitate more meaningful connections with the people around us. To make more, to reflect with more meaning from the situations that we are facing. What do I mean by that? It is not just about positive emotions that will connect. If we are experiencing frustration with a certain situation, that emotion is a gift from God to let us be aware of our inner state. And to let us realize that, hey, you know, there must be something that you are missing out. Maybe the whole area is that you need to work on your trust in God. The reason why you are frustrated, that emotion is a gift from God to tell us that we need to work on our patience. The emotion where we are angry with somebody, that particular emotion is a gift that God has allowed for us to say, that, is there something that you need to work out with that person or with the interpretation of something that has happened with that person? Good stewards of emotions allow us to recognize that all these things are signposts that God is using are using them for us to improve our mental and our emotional health. What is good stewardship of our emotion? How can you become a good steward of your emotions? Learn how to respond intentionally with the people and in the situations that you are facing. To be a good steward of our emotion is that before we even react to something, we must ask ourselves, what does God wants me to feel? How does God wants me to respond instead of reacting to the, with that person or in that situation? That is good stewardship of our emotions. The next time you are going to burst out in anger, the next time you are going to you are going to struggle in your depression, the next time you are you are you are going to express your 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 frustration with against somebody, be good steward. Pause for a while and say, Holy Spirit, teach me how should I respond. Good stewardship of our emotion is about us being responsible in managing our emotion according to the word of God in a way that honors God. 
and, uh, and as we do so, God allows us to experience how to live emotionally abundantly. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 to 7. You know, it's very similar, a reflection of what Ken has shared with us just now about 1 Thessalonians. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 to 7 talks about how can we be good stewards of our emotion. And it's interesting that the first emotion that God wants us to embrace is this. What is the first emotion? As you look at this verse in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, the first emotion is joy. The Apostle Paul tells us, rejoice in the Lord always. What does that mean? In other words, with what the good things you're having, delight, always be glad. If I were to use a very ordinary word, it's just be happy with all the good things that are happening to you. Always be glad because you have the Lord. That's why it says rejoice in the Lord always. Right where you are right now, I want to say I shall rejoice in the Lord always. I shall rejoice in the Lord always. And say the third time, I shall rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice and take delight and pleasure because of the Lord. And he says, as if that's not enough, the author says, again, I will say to you, rejoice, be glad. So many of us, it's so interesting. Why, is, why are Singaporeans, why a country like Singapore, which is one of the most prosperous countries in the world, are living with more unhappier people because we have forgotten how to rejoice. Rejoice because of the Lord. Rejoice because I have good health that we found in the eyes, in the bless under the blessings of God. Rejoice that I have a salary because God is providing for me. Rejoice that I have children. Rejoice that my parents are alive and healthy. Rejoice that my spouse is in is in a in a relationship with me that whereby we are both each being blessed and we are both blessings. Rejoice in the Lord always. And it says, let your gentle spirit. In the next verse, let your gentle spirit be known to all men. God wants us to live abundantly. To be able to enjoy emotional well-being. Not only to always be dominated, be detected by anger, frustration, sadness, depression, and grief. That's not what God wants. God says rejoice always. And let your gentle spirit be known to all people. Be a person that is known to have a gentle spirit, to have gentleness, to have mercy, to have tolerance, and to have patience. What are you known as? Let me say this prophetically to you right now. As a father, as a mother, what, who are you known as or what are you known as as far as emotions are concerned? Are you known as a gentle parent? As a spouse, let me say right now, and may the Spirit of God speaks to you. What are you known as as a spouse? Are you known by your gentle spirit? One that has got mercy, one that practices patience. As a boss, as a line manager, as a worker, as an employee, what are you known as at the workplace? Are you known as a frustrated, grumbling, complaining person? Or are you known as one that is always joyful and for your gentleness? God wants you to live abundantly. Let your gentle spirit be known by all people. You see, our Lord is so beautiful. He is so lovely. He doesn't just tell you, 
I want you to do that. He doesn't say, he doesn't stop there. God is not a, a father who just tell us what he wants from us. He also tells us the solutions. And in order for us to enjoy that blessings of abundance. That's why the next verse says, in order for you to always be rejoicing, in order for you to be known for your gentle spirit, that is what you can do. What you must do, in fact, do not be anxious for anything. In other words, let nothing cause you to be anxious. Do not be a, do not be a worrisome person. Do, when it says do not be anxious, it says do not fix your eyes on worrying for things. Many of us are worrying for things that may that have not happened, that may not happen, that will not happen. Do not be worried. But in everything, in every circumstance, in every situation, what can you do? Leave to the Lord your concerns by prayer, by petition, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. In other words, Tell God, tell God what you need. God, you know, I am, I am stuck in this situation right now. The customer is not placing the order. Surrender it to God. And as you surrender to God, give thanks to God. Thank God for this customer. And when there's a small sign, like a sign of a small cloud in the sky, not as huge as you wanted to, this first order comes in, not big enough, the way you wanted to, to meet your target. Yet, as you make your request to God, tell God what you need, thank Him for all He has already done. God, my children are not growing up the way I, I believe they should be. They are not getting the school results that they want. They are not as obedient as I wanted to. Well, do not be anxious. What do you need to do? Tell God everything that you need. And when there's a the first sign of an improvement, give thanks to God. When you start giving thanks to God, God continues to honour His answer. Do not be anxious about everything. Tell God what you need. If you have a, if you have a, if you, if you are struggling in the area of your finances, do not just be upset with yourself that you can't bring in the money. Do not be, do not be depressed thinking that tomorrow you're going to be in greater trouble. But tell God everything. Why do you need this money? Tell God. Tell God exactly how much you need to be able to pay this debt. To be able to pay this bill. But as God begins to bless you, in, in, maybe God answers you in one time, maybe God answers you in steps. But yet, in any way, start giving thanks to God. Start giving thanks to God. Let your, tell God what you need and thank Him for all that He has done. Which is the reason why God says, when you begin to do that, you will experience emotional well-being pray and give thanks to god and the peace of god which surpasses all understanding the peace the god of peace will give you the peace of god in a way that you never understood you know you will begin to realize that i do not walk by sight i am walking by faith not just based on what i see but I trust in the Lord and there shall be an overwhelming sense of peace that guard your hearts. No one can understand, can understand, but you are peaceful because you know this peace controls the way you think and the way you feel. Hallelujah. Let yourself be known by all people as a gentle with a gentle spirit, one that has got gentleness, mercy, peace. Let you be known as a person that's always joyful, 
not based on circumstances. What can you do then? My, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, learn how to tell God what you need by prayer. You know, there's this particular prayer app that our church has. It's called Uplift Prayer. Download this app. Take a picture right now. Make a screenshot right now. So that after this particular Sunday message, go and log in and be part of a prayer community. I like this app because it tells you, it calls you to write down what you are telling God what you need. But the minute God answers your prayer, you are able to give thanks to God. Share your prayer needs. Pray for one another. As the life trap share our prayer needs, we can pray for one another. That is what we must do. That is a spirit of mercy, a spirit of patience. Let us cultivate a spirit of thanksgiving, a, prayer, a spirit of prayerfulness. And when we do so, we will experience how to live abundantly. Yes, spiritual richness, emotional well-being. The third area that I want you to experience is that God wants you to learn how to have healthy relationships. Relationship richness is what God wants us to experience. Let's be honest. Today, unfortunately, the devil has begun to cause us to live and to a relationship that are so shallow, they are so transactional, that once we get what we want, or once people get what they want from us, the relationship begins to wither, begins to fade. That is not what God wants from us. God wants us to enjoy healthy and rich relationship. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. I hope you are taking down notes, you know. And all these verses are beautiful Bible passages that God has given to us as words of wisdom. And as you study the word of God, use these verses to use different passages for the week ahead and study the verses. Meditate on all this Bible truth and you will begin to realize that your faith is growing. Don't just spend your life singing worship song alone, listening to worship song alone. You know, worship song, worshipping God is what God has commanded us, but not with songs. You can only, faith comes by hearing. Faith doesn't come by our singing songs. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17 says this, A friend loves at all times. In other words, God says, be a friend that is always there to help in every situation. And be a brother that is there to share the troubles that your sister or your brother is going through. Be a person as if that you are born to help in time of needs. This is the kind of relationships that God wants us to have in our community. At River Church Community, in Life Tribes, we want to build a community whereby we are going to be a friend who is able to help in time of needs. We are going to be a brother or a sister who is going to be there to help in times of needs in every situation. What is stewardship? People think that stewardship is about how you manage money alone. But that is not true. There are two things that we say that we learned last week about having a generous heart. It's not just about financial blessings alone. It's about our time, our talents, our treasures. Build treasures that last forever. Don't just build treasures, precious possession that the moth will eat and the grass will corrupt. And one of the treasures that we can have in life is precious, rich, healthy relationship. The world teaches us, the people are around us to help us succeed in life. But the Bible says that, no, I want you to be part of a community whereby you are a friend 
you are a brother or sister that will support people in the situation in difficult circumstance in time of their need you are not going to run away though you may not need them but because they need you be a friend be a brother if you are sitting next to somebody right now or if somebody is in your car right now listening to this particular streaming can you say i am your friend i am your brother i am your sister what is good stewardship you know learn how to invest your time learn how to invest your time and effort in building friendship and relationship in such a way that is not transactional not because you need them but because you we need each other we need one another you see healthy relationships need time need effort that we we have to invest in you know sometimes we are isn't it so sad i find it so sad i find it so such a tragic that even the christian church itself brothers and sisters in christ are only means for our needs to be met to be honest with you even as a pastor i struggle to find a spiritual brother or sister who will always lean in not only just in good times but in times of needs sometimes i find even stronger relationships with the people that is in the secular world they are there to console me they are there to encourage me now of course i give thanks to god for all these secular friends colleagues and clients who never run away because they do not need me or because they can get nothing from me but when they know that i'm struggling they are there for me and with me while i celebrate and i'm grateful for all this i think that it is a shame and that is not what god wants of how healthy relationships should be in the spiritual family is said when i when i see that when christians when they do not need their pastors when they do not need their leaders when they do not need their brothers in christ because they've gotten what they want from them that have caused them to go on to the next episode and the next stage of their life they begin to go away because they don't need anymore good stewardship is saying that is not the way i'm going to look at i'm going to invest time and efforts in discipleship in mentorship in just simply building meaningful connection with god and with others that is what rich and meaningful relationships are about it's about practicing the love and forgiveness yes this brother might have hurt me but i'm willing to forgive i'm going to give him or her another chance so many people so many christians if you think carefully so many christians have left the church why because they have been hurt by the church they've been hurt by the people in church but if we are going to be a good steward we're going to say that i'm going to forgive i know that this person has done make a mistake but i'm not going to leave church because of that i know that this person has fallen short of the way it should be but i'm going to practice love i'm going to practice grace even though then in difficult times i'm going to lean in together that is what st stewardship of friendships are all about a beautiful example which i want to encourage you to read and study this this two character is can be found in the book of ruth you see when naomi was widowed when her husband passed on ruth pledged an unwavering loyalty to naomi a, a powerful example and model of how we must lean in not in a transactional manner but we lean in because relationships are gifts from god and we are not just using people 
to get what we want for that stage of our life, but we are there even when we do not need them, but because they need us. Ruth chapter 1 verse 16. Ruth told Naomi, although Ruth does not need Naomi anymore, Ruth can be free of Naomi. But Ruth said to Naomi, do not ask me, do not tell me to leave you or to turn my back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you shall leave, sleep and lodge, I shall leave, sleep and lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God shall be my God. Wow. That should be the way. That should be the way that our communities and our relationships should be. Where we do not use people, but we are there to be a gift to people. Do not ask me to go away, though I do not need you. I, your people shall be my people. Your life traps shall be our life traps. Your God shall be my God. It's so interesting. When we begin to live abundantly with relationship richness, people will follow after our God. Maybe one of the reasons why there are many non-Christians who are not convinced that our God is worth following is because there are many Christians who will never be loyal to their own spiritual family. That's the reason why they do not want to follow our God. And yet we go around and say that, oh, how come people don't become Christians and, be, and don't embrace and believe in the good news? Maybe one of the ways is to learn how to live abundantly. So what can you do? What can you do to be able to live in a way that you have relationship richness? I want, to, I want to write that down. Look at your timetable. Look at the weekly schedule. Is there a time that you set apart to invest in relationships? Oh, you realize that you have time to spend time with your colleague because you needed them. You may even spend time with your bosses because you want them to do something for you. I'm talking about looking at your timetable you schedule every week and say, are you willing to invest time not because you need that person, but because that person needs you? Invest your time to reach out to someone in need, to be a listening ear, to extend forgiveness, to share your love. That is what you can do. Three things right now. Spiritual richness. Second one. God wants you to live with emotional well-being. Thirdly, invest your time in relationship richness. The fourth one is physical vitality. Many people like to say this. You know, this is my body. I decide what I want to do. But Apostle Paul says otherwise. Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20, says this. Do you not know? Do you not? I think this is a wrong verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. Do you not know? Or is did I give you the do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Apostle Paul is saying this to you: your body, my body, each of them is a gift from God. And this is not our own body that we declare that is our own property. Why? Because in verse 20, it says, you have been bought with a great high price. Jesus has died at the cross for our sins and he has purchased us with the precious blood of Jesus, bled at the cross. And therefore, honor and glorify God with your body. Hallelujah. What Apostle Paul is saying to us is this. We must be good stewards of our physical body. This, to be good stewards of our physical body allows us to live abundantly. 
because we will be able, we will be able to be good stewards because we use our body to glorify and honor God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in other words, Apostle Paul says, don't despise your physical body. If the doctor tells you, you are made to have a sick body because of your genes, because your parents' genes, never, never give in to that lie. If God has healed you, God wants you to use your body and your physical health to be able to honor and glorify God. Do not live in such a way that your health is deteriorating. Live in such a way that you maintain the good health or to even improve the health that God has given to you. Good stewardship of our physical body means that we make wise choices to promote physical health and well-being. That is what God wants us to do. It is not your body. It belongs to God and trusted to you to take care of and to use it to glorify and honor God. Whatever you do to your body, with your body, God is saying that, are you glorifying and honoring me? Or it's just something that you treat it as your own, that's all. That's what God is saying. What can you do then to live abundantly? Make wise choices. Make wise choices of how you live to make sure that you eat responsibly, to make sure that you're regular exercise. I see people say, oh, you know, I don't know why my body is so weak. You know, I can't, my knees are painful. I can't walk properly. You know, I be, I, my back hurts. When all the while, you never get yourself involved in regular exercise. You begin to say, oh, it must be the devil. It must be the devil. No. Be responsible to make sure you have a healthy lifestyle. Exercise regularly. Eat healthily. And rest sufficiently. That is what you need to do. Physical vitality. And use your body to glorify and honor God. When, when you are sick, you know, and you ask for healing, after you've been healed, glorify and honor God. When you are, when you have all the health, use your body as you can move around to be part of Bible study, to visit, to visit a old folks' home, to go to the home to give away food, you know, to bless someone, to do discipleship, to connect someone, to come together to build relationship. That is what you can do. Lastly, I want you to believe. I want you to know that the word of God says that, right? Find, to live abundantly involves us to be able to give generously. Now, as I say, you know, when we are living in abundance, we have more, in, more than enough to share. You know, I have never realized, using this week's episode, I have never realized to us, and pastor, it may be $80, but I realized that food is so expensive. But thank God that we have more than enough to share. And God says, if you want to live abundantly, you see, Singaporeans are getting richer, but we still have a poverty mentality. We always think that we do not have enough when we have more than enough. It is possible that we have more than enough but we have a poverty mentality. Being stingy, being a miser, not willing to share with others. But the Bible says this, God wants us to live abundantly. And God says the key to live abundantly is to learn how to honor me with your wealth. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10 says, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with your possession. Learn how to share and use the first fruits of all that you are 
producing in your income, your paycheck. Give the best of everything to me and use it to honor the Lord. It's so beautiful, isn't it? Remember last week in the Sunday message about a generous heart. I said to you that Jesus was sitting at the temple watching, not watching what the rich is giving, but watching how the rich is giving, not watching what the poor is giving, but watching how the poor is giving. You see, the rich was giving. Yes, by all means, continue to give. But the rich, God, Jesus, was watching how the rich was giving. The rich was giving from whatever they do not need from the surpluses. But God says, no, I want you to honor me with the best part of everything. And when that happened, do you know what's going to happen? When that happened, God promises us in the next verse, when you honor me with the best part of everything, your storehouses, in today's modern terms, for many of you who does not have an agricultural background, it means this, your banks, your warehouse will be filled with plenty. It will overflow. You will overflow with good new wine. How many of you want this to happen in your life? Can you say, God, fill my storehouses. God, fill my vats with good new wine. If that's what you want, can you lift up your hands? If you are suffering financially because you have debts to pay, because you are not able to pay the bills, maybe because of a mistake that you have made in your life, if you are looking for God to provide you financially, to take care of your health, to provide for your children and your parents, i got good news for you. Tell the Lord right now, lift your hands and say, God, fill my storehouse with plenty. You know what does that mean? It means that, right, everything that you need, you will find more than enough. If that is what you want, God has given us the key to abundant living. And that is honor the Lord with the best part of your health, with your wealth. Not give him whatever that is balanced. That's why the Bible commanded us in Malachi, you know, when you get an income, what you get, the first part, give it back to the Lord, the 10%. The first fruits, whatever is, give it first, and the Lord will bless whatever is balanced. Wow. And when you do that with, with generous giving, some of us maybe have taken advantage of the fact that right now, our giving is all through the through through in through electronics transfer. And nobody's gonna see. And therefore, we choose not to give anymore. I want you to be blessed. I want, I want to experience verse 9 that your storehouses will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new good wine. I want you to be blessed like what Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25 says: when a man is generous. When a man is a source of blessing to others, you know what does it say? A generous person will be prosperous. A generous person will be made rich because his generosity, her generosity will be rewarded by God. And the one who refreshes others, the one who gives others plenty of water to refresh. He himself, she herself will also be refreshed. Yes, it is time to give our first fruit to the Lord. Not our balance. Not that when we pay this, pay that, you know, and then whatever if we have, we give it to the Lord. Let the Lord bless what you give and balance then for the Lord to bless Bless you. You know, the Lord, do not leave only whatever that's left over. Be a generous person, church. Because when you do that, the Bible promises us, or God promises us, that you will be prosperous. Can you raise your hand and say, God, make me prosperous. 
I shall be generous to share. Our church, we are hoping to be able to build enough strength to be able to rule out the four initiatives to provide food stability, food security. Yes, you may, if you are in Singapore, you may be, you know, sometimes I say that I tell people I'm from Singapore and I told them that there are people that are poor in Singapore. They do not believe me. You see, the Singaporeans are so rich. I told them that there's only a part that you're seeing. There are so many people who are struggling, who have no idea when is the next meal. If you are a foreigner working in Singapore, you may have your minimum wage. But Singaporeans don't have minimum wage. There are people who are suffering. We hope to build our initiative, enough strength and resources to be able to provide food stability for others, to be able to help the poor in India, in Indonesia. We want to be able to say that if we go to some villages who doesn't even have a proper access to clean water, we want to buy systems to provide clean water for them so that they can have clean water for their children, for, you know, for proper sanitation. We want to be able to provide education. Yes, oh, in Singapore, we, many of our children, you know, all our children are able to go to education. But there are many people who need to travel 30 kilometers to walk to school. And because of that, they can't go to school every day. We want to be able to support education for children and for young people so that they are literate. I want you to be generous. All this work they are doing right now, having Sunday service, having a, a streaming like this, they all need resources. The workers needs to be needs to be paid, to be provided so that they can focus on the work of God. I want you to be generous. Live abundantly with a generous giving and sharing. What can you do? What can you do? I just want to be very direct with every one of us. You know, all you can, what you can do is this. Manage your finances wisely and ask yourself, am I giving the first fruit? Am I giving the best part to honor the Lord with my wealth? Or am I living in a very careless manner? If I remember, I give. If I don't, I don't. Maybe I will give only after I pay everything. Let me say this to you. God says this. A generous person will be rewarded with even more generosity from the Lord. And he or she shall be prosperous. Yes. If you have not been, if you want, if you want to give to the work that we are doing right now, that we have our life traps every week. We have work in India, in Singapore, you know, we are exploring work in Indonesia, in Batam. You know, the worker needs to be provided for, you know, the resources need to be supported, you know, in order for us to make that possible. I want you to look at this and say, you know, look at this number, take a picture, a screenshot after this service, you know, give generously. Yes, no man can see because it's inter interbank transfer. No one is watching how much you drop into the offering bag because we are not we are not yet meeting in a physical place. But Jesus, look at our heart. Are you the rich that give the surpluses, or are you giving obediently, sacrificially, and generously because you have a generous heart? Church. I'm coming to a, to a close for today's message. I desire, I am a firm advocate to the extent of being stubborn, that God believing that according to God's word, He wants us to live abundantly. He wants us to enjoy abundance in all these five areas. He wants you to be spiritually rich. He wants you always to seek after God and His kingdom and all His righteousness. God wants you not to live in sadness, in depression. Many men are struggling with anger. Many women are struggling with helplessness and depression. Many of us are so impatient. God wants us to have the peace of God that surpasses understanding. 
tell God what you need and give thanks to God. At the same time, rejoice in the Lord always. God wants you. You know something? When we treat other people in a shallow manner, and we, when we treat people as if that they are tools and means for us to get something along the way, we may even experience that in our own life. Our parents are watching. Our children are watching. Our families are watching. Do not leave relationships just because you don't need them because you have your needs met for that episode of your life or that stage of your life. Learn how to invest in deep, rich relationships, not because you need them, you need something from them, but because you know that you can be a blessing for them. Relationships are not transactional. It is meant to be meaningful and connected, especially in the spiritual family of God. Let us build a growing community. Let us be good stewards of our bodies. Don't believe that you, just because you are old, you cannot do this, you cannot do that. Are you living life meaningfully with your physical body? Yes, you cannot carry a 100 kg weight. But are you living life meaningfully to glorify and honor God? If, are, you, are you wasting your life away by an unhealthy lifestyle with no regular exercise, with no nutritious meals, with no sufficient rest. Squandering and wasting your life every day to work 10 hours, 12 hours, 16 hours. And at the end of the day, you ask yourself, oh, why is my body having this sickness when we are slogging our body without a proper healthy lifestyle? Are we being good stewards with our finances, honoring the Lord with the best part, with a generosity? We may be rich, but we want to have also have an abundant mentality. Don't be wealthy, but with a poverty mentality. The beautiful thing is this when we begin to do all these things according to God's word, you will realize that abundance. Is not a destination. Abundance is a way of living. It is not a destination where we arrive. But as we do all these things according to the word of God, being a good steward, we begin to realize that there's so much joy that we can live happy. That, that we realize that we can live healthy and we can live abundantly. Hallelujah. As you look at these five as you look at these five areas, it's not asking you to choose one of them. The beautiful thing is this. The good news of Jesus Christ is this. The good news of Christian faith is this. God is able, God will, and God wants to bless us to live abundantly in all these areas. And if that's what you want, I want you to pray together with me. I want to lift up your hands with me right now. This is a serious prayer. The church has failed. The Christian faith and the Christian church has failed in many, many ways. Even we believe that success and life is all about the way the world defines. I think it's time for us to redeem back the life that God wants us to have. I think that there's some of you here who may be living lesser than abundance. And if that is your prayer that you want to restore and redeem this, you want God to reward you with abundant life. If there's some areas that is in front of you right now that you know that's lacking, maybe some of you are sick, Maybe some of you are struggling financially. Maybe some of you, you are, you are emotionally drained. Some of you may have lost your first love as a Christian. Some of you have become a miser. You begin to count 
and be calculating of what you give to God regarding your time, your talents, and your treasures. But today's message has become a reminder for you. I want you to lift up your hands. As you lift up your hands, I trust in that it is a way to say, God, you're asking God for forgiveness. And I want you to say, agree with me. Every time I say some words that you agree with because you want to receive this abundance from God, I want you to just believe that God is working as you obey what I share with you today. Hallelujah. If you are with your family, if you are with someone, I want you to hold the hands of the person. I want you to put your hands over the person's shoulder. Because that is what God wants. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, as we come before you today, we are so grateful, O oh God, to be able to be gathered as a spiritual community. Yes, give thanks to God. Give thanks to God that you are part of a river church community, a life tribe. That we are able to start work, work on this journey towards abundance, to live abundantly. I want to give thanks to God. God, thank you for reminding us that to live abundantly is not just about the accumulation of material things and possession, but it's about how can we be a good manager and a good steward of every aspect of our life to be used for your glory? God, I want to thank you. Give thanks to God for what you learned today. God, grant us the wisdom. Grant us the wisdom to be able to prioritize, to be able to prioritize our relationship with you above all else. I hope you are hearing me right now because my video seems to be frozen. Are you hearing me right now? Because my video is frozen. Hallelujah. You see, I, I believe even what you're experiencing right now tells you, you reveals to you that the thief come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's why the thief is right now even intervening in our, in our prayer right now. That is how real the spiritual world is. Don't give up right now as we pray together. God, give us the wisdom to prioritize our relationship with you above all else. To seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. God, Heavenly Father, teach us to be good stewards of our emotions. We want to surrender our worries and our fear to the loving Father. We want to surrender our anger, our frustration, and we want to experience the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Guide us, O oh God, in honouring our bodies to make wise choices, to be able to use our body, not just have a healthy body, but to use our body to glorify and honour you. God, grant us the faith and the grace to be able to be generous with our finances, recognizing that everything belongs to you. Heavenly Father, right now, in Jesus' mighty name, if there's anyone, though they cannot see the video right now, but Lord, because you are a powerful God. Yes, God, you are a powerful God. Therefore, right now, in Jesus' mighty name, you are a powerful God, and because you are a powerful God right now, in Jesus' mighty name, we come against the work of the devil that seeks to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Hallelujah. Right now, in Jesus' mighty name, if there's anyone of us here 
that is struggling to live abundantly, Lord, we declare that the chain be broken right now in Jesus' mighty name. Let the captives be set free right now because you, your good news will set us free by the truth that we, we want us to live abundantly. God, I say right now in Jesus' mighty name, yes, open a window of heaven and pour forth your blessings that every aspect of our life that is listed in front of us right now shall enjoy, shall enjoy richness, shall enjoy shall enjoy blessings right now in Jesus' mighty name. God, I pray that as our church continue to be obedient to you, to the word of God, you shall demonstrate yourself to be a God of abundance. We thank you and pray all this in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people say, Amen. Hallelujah. Church, I, want, I, I hope that you realize this. There's a lot of spiritual warfare that's happening to stop you from receiving the blessings. And you can see this, you know, and I want you not to give up. I, I want you to just continue, lean in, be obedient to God of what I have been sharing with you. And as you do so, God will bless us with a godly, rich, joy, well life. Hallelujah. God bless you. Now we will close the service right now. You know, because of time, we will not have the we will not have the uh, closing song. But I want you to know that as a church, you are loved by God. You are loved by everyone. We want to be here to support you, and we want you to be here to support us as well, so that the work of God shall be expanded, and through us, many more people will experience the good news of God. God bless all of you. Have a wonderful and lovely week ahead of you. God bless you and love you all. Hallelujah. I'll see you next week.